Welcome to Drafting with DesignCAD. In today's lesson, we're going to be using DesignCAD, which is found on your desktop right here, to draft a simple CAD drawing. The CAD drawing that we're going to draft looks like this. This is one that I pre-drafted just to show you what it looks like. And it teaches us the basics of how to get around using the X and Y axes by entering different coordinates. This is a precise technical drawing, so we are not sketching. We are going to be placing points and uh, then placing more points in order to get from point A to point B. So let's begin. I'll minimize this and we'll refer back to it. To begin we start by opening up DesignCAD. Double click on that. And once this opens you're going to want to check drawing units. Make sure the drawing units are set to millimeters, and then press OK. And here we have a few different options. We have an open an existing drawing, create a new drawing, and these are the only two that we really ever use. So let's create a new drawing. And this will open up a blank page for us to draw on. This tip does come up every time, unless you select this button, but I like to read this once in a while because it teaches me something. So if you have some time once in a while, Take a, a little <clears throat> time to read this tip of the day and close. Now because this was one of your first drafts you're going to do, I'm just going to show you around a little bit. On the left hand side we have our tools. And if you hold down all of these, I call them drawers, you can select different tools. For example, this is a tool that we use very often. We're going to be using it today called the ortho line drawing tool. And again, underneath each of these, there's different shapes and different tools that you can use, circles, polygons. There's some dimensioning tools, some text tools. These are your trim tools. This is, um, well, this is your grouping tool, your hatch tool, line style box, which we don't really use too often, and your color toolbox. Anything below this we don't really use at this point. On the right hand side there's our color toolbox and it's open right now so we're going to be drawing in black so make sure that's selected. And on the right side down here are your zoom tools and I'll talk to you more about these once we draw a few lines. On the top make sure none of these are selected except for 2D. You are not drawing in 3D so make sure 2D is selected. But none of these should be selected. Over here we have your create a new drawing, open an existing drawing, a quick save, print, and we don't use any of these. Not right now anyways. And of course under each of these, like any program, these are just drop down menus where you can access more tools and such. Some of these, like the dimension tool for example, I can find right here. <clears throat> So we have a new drawing. It's untitled right now. Let's go ahead and start drawing. So underneath our line drawing toolbox, I want you to select the second one in. And this one, if I hover over it, it tells me what it is. It's an ortho line drawing tool. Now, your mouse. On the left and the right side of your mouse, there's two buttons. There's a button on the right, a button on the left. The right mouse button is called a snap and we can't snap to anything right now but I'll show you that in a bit. The left one is where if I just want to take and click on a point without um, snapping to the nearest point. So take your cursor, it should be a crosshair now. If it's not a crosshair you don't have a tool selected. And left click on the uh, bottom left hand corner of the line, of the screen. Now I can drag this and I can just click, now please don't do this at this time. We can click all the way around, and this is not drawing technically. We're just randomly selecting points. Now, what I want to do is I want to tell the computer how to get from point A to point B, not just randomly selecting points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the screen in the lower left-hand corner, and that's my starting point, and now I'm going to go up to point, relative. And what that does is it asks me how far do I want to go in relation to my starting point or my last point. 
So make sure this is selected. None of these should ever be selected. Always look at this and make sure this is the one it's on. If it's not available, it means that you're doing something wrong. So now dx means distance along the x-axis. x-axis is when I draw from left to right or right to left. dy is when I go up and down. Okay, so dy is called my vertical and dx is called my horizontal. So right now I want to go up 40. So what I want to do is on dy, distance y, I want to type in 40 and I want to press enter. I'm going to press enter one more time to draw that green line black. So this is my first line that I've drawn and what I'm going to do, the first thing I want to do is save this. I'm happy with it, it's 40, it's exactly what I wanted. So I'm going to go File, Save As, and this box pops up. Now I want you, if you haven't already, to create a folder on your desktop. So before I save this, let's just exit this and make sure you know how to do that. I'll minimize this, and here's my folder. I'm just going to place that in the top right corner. To make a folder, we right click and we close New Folder. And you're going to put your name, so let's say it's um, Jen Berkeley. And I would like you to put your grade. So let's say this is a grade 8 course, or maybe a grade 9 course. Grade 9. And it would be really helpful if you put your period that you're, you're uh, attending. So let's say it's period 5. And then just take this and place it up here on the right hand side. I like to have all my students folders here and all of the uh, computer program folders here. So this is where you're going to save all your stuff, but obviously you're going to put your own name on that. Now let's go back to DesignCAD. This here is my 40 line. I want to now draw a line to the right. Now to draw a line to the right, I need to get my tool. I can't just simply go to this point and start drawing with my cursor because it's not a tool. Well, it is a tool, but it's not the tool that I want. So I'm going to take and get that tool again. And to get to exactly this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. And I'll just kind of scroll up just to make sure you can see this. I'm going to purposely put my mouse here and right click. And what that does is it snaps to the nearest point. Now if it's your first time using the program, when you press the right click button, it's going to ask you what do you want to use the right click button for. And I believe, if I recall, it's gravity snap. It's the very top option. So make sure you select that. I'll show you that one more time. Right click. And now I can proceed in my drawing. And I'll just show, just scroll down. If I right click, let's say over here, it's going to go to this point. It always goes to the nearest point. So you don't have to be that close when you snap. You just have to be closer to that point than on any other point. So let's proceed. Make sure you have your ortho line drawing tool and right click or snap to this point. And let's go point, relative, and this time we're going to go on the x-axis, 20. Now with this tool, the one of the axes should always be 0. So this now is going to be 0. I'm just going 20 to the right. I'm not drawing at an angle, so there's no need for two dimensions here. So dx is 20, press OK. Now, I'm only going to press Enter again, and I'd like you to do the same, because I am really drawing something here I'll show you. I'm just drawing this part right here. And I have a lot more height than I need in my drawing. So I'm going to use the zoom tools to show you uh, more of the drawing. So this is the zoom tools on the right hand side. This is called my fit to screen or fit to window I guess. And if I click that, it fits everything I've drawn to the window that I'm working on. This is my negative and my positive. So let's say I click positive, then I can go zoom in. Or if I click negative, then I can 
zoom out. If I click the positive, let's say, three times, one, two, three, I can use it three times, one, two, three. And it goes back to my cursor. And that's the same with the negative. This is my previous zoom, so if I liked working in the zoom previous, I click that and it goes to the previous zoom. And this one here is zoom window, which I use quite a bit. If you click on that, you just draw a little box and it'll zoom right in to that spot. Okay, so everybody click fit to window. Now I'd like you to click the negative three times. One, two, three. And let's click on your screen. One, two, three. We're going to take and scroll this over and scroll it down so that we can proceed with our drawing in this open space. Go ahead and grab your ortho line drawing tool and right click or snap to this point. I'm going to go up 20. So point relative. Oh, I was going to use the quick key, but I'm not going to show you that just yet. Point relative. DX is 0. And DY is 20. And press Enter. This time, don't press Enter again. We're going to continue drawing. So, point relative. DX is 20. DY is 0. Enter. And again. Point relative. This time I'm going to go down 20. So I'm going on a vertical down. That's negative because I'm going down. And dx is 0. So every time I'm going down or to the left, it's negative. Every time I'm going up or to the right, it's positive. There we go, down 20. Okay, let's go to the right. So we're going to go point relative. And 20 and 0. Enter. Now I'm going to show you a quick shortcut. Instead of going up to point relative, you can see that this little apostrophe is the quick key. That's really nice to know. Because if <clears throat> I've got a point started, I just have to hit apostrophe. Now it's not going to do it for me because I already went up here. Okay, let me see if I can do it this way. Yep, I hit apostrophe, and now I can type in my coordinates. So I'm going up 0 and 20 on the y, because I'm going up. Hit apostrophe, and now we're going to the right 20. And you're noticing I'm using my cursor to get to the next one. I'm going to show you a quick way to get to the y value. So dy uh, is now negative 20, so point re relative, apostrophe is my point relative, 0 on dx. Now if I press tab, I don't have to touch my mouse. It takes me to dy. It's a very quick way. In fact, I really only had to use my mouse to start this drawing, and then after that, I could have pretty much finished the majority of the drawing without touching the mouse. So tab takes me to dy, and... I forget where I'm drawing. I think I'm going negative 20. Let's see. Negative 20. Press enter. There we go. Apostrophe is point relative. This time we're going 40 on the y. Tab takes me to dy and 0. Sorry, did I say y? dx is 40. dy is 0. Enter. Now I've come to the end of my straight line, so I'm going to press enter to draw this. Now every time I press enter, this is all connected, so if I move this away, you can see that's connected. This is an area that I pressed enter, so it's not connected to this, not yet. I'm going to just put that back. Now let's proceed to the bottom of our drawing. Get the line drawing tool. Snap or right click near this point. Point relative, 140. And 0 on the y, enter. 
point relative, and I'm going 20 up this time, so 0 on the x, I'm going on a vertical up, by is 20, and press enter, and press enter to draw the line black. And there you have it. I should probably save this. You should save it every 5 to 10 minutes. So file, save. We've already, oh no, we haven't. Maybe I skipped that place. So we have to go save as. We have a folder. I meant to save it earlier. And we have to find our folders. So click on this down arrow. Usually you go to desktop. That's where we have our files. And we scroll down. You're going to put you, it in your file. I'm going to put this in my folder. So I'm going to double click on my folder. It should say my name here. And we're going to call this CAD1. Now I already have a CAD1 file here. So I'm going to call this uh, CAD1A. Okay. And let's save that. And it should say CAD1 up here. Okay, let's learn a new tool. The new tool is how to draw angles. If you hold this down, the very first tool is called my line drawing tool. Now this can draw straight lines, but it can also draw angles. So make sure we click that. It's, we always know if it's indented that we get our crosshairs and that we're able to use it. And now we're only simply going to snap to this point and this point. So right click, right click, enter. Now there's some boxes in the middle here, some rectangular boxes. One is located 10 down from this point, and it's a 40 by 10 box. So we're going to just draw a temporary line here that's 10 down. Get your line drawing tool. I'm going to just go back to that ortho line drawing tool. Snap here. I'm going to just escape so it's not highlighted. So snap here, right click, point relative, and we're going negative 10 on dy. So tab takes me to dy, negative 10, enter. I'm going to press enter again because I want this line to be a separate line so I can delete it later. I'll just put it back here. To draw this box, we're going to get our ortho line drawing tool, right click to this point, hit point relative or apostrophe, Apostrophe is to the left of the Enter key. 40 on DX. DY is 0. Press Enter. Now we're going to go down 10. So point relative. 0 on DX. Tab. Negative 10. Enter. Now here's a trick. If I move my mouse over here, well, because I'm using the ortho line drawing tool, it'll keep the line straight. When I right click, it will line up to here because this line is longer. So if I right click, it lines up perfectly to here. And I can right click again. Now press enter. Now this line we can delete. So what we do is we just click on it with our cursor and press the delete key, not the backspace key. We're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to draw this line down 10, grab the line drawing tool. Right click, point relative, negative 10, it's already there, so I'll just press enter, and enter again. I'm going to show you a new way of how to draw a box, using the box drawing tool. Now this box allows me to, if I'm going to snap here, I can draw a box. I have to enter two coordinates, and I'm going to do it in point relative. So I'm just going to show that to you again. We grab the box, right click. And we go point relative. This box is 20 wide by negative 25 deep because we're going down with the box. So 25 on dx. And this is one of the times we're going to use two uh, numbers in our point relative, two values. So 25, oh, I made a mistake. dx is 20. I'm going to go back up there. 20 and negative 25 on dy. Now when I press enter, there we go. You can see where my cursor is. We went 20 and negative 25. And click on this. Press delete. And there you have it. A completed CAD drawing.
Now it's not quite complete yet because we have to add the dimensions. So if you're zoomed all the way in like this, you should be. I want everyone to click fit to window and make sure it's fit to window just so we all start at the same spot. And now let's click the negative sign once and go in the middle of the drawing and click. What we've done is we've created some space around the drawing and I can just center it with my scroll bars and this will allow me to apply dimensions around the drawing. Now since the drawing is done this is a good time to save it. Because we already have it named we can just click save and it will just save with that name in your folder. Okay let's talk dimensions. This really is <clears throat> hard to say if it's a technical drawing without dimensions because it just kind of looks like a character, a cartoon character or something. Maybe a Lego block. This is my dimensioning drawer. And we can dimension lines, angles, radiuses, diameter, arcs, and we never use any of these. Well, we use this one sometimes. We are mostly going to use this one. And that's what we're going to start with. When you click on it, a box should have shown up. And it didn't. So I can't do anything right now. But this is typical of this program. So let me just see here. Click it again. No box. I'm going to save this. So if this ever happens to you, you save it. You shut down the program. Oh, there's the one that we're going to be drawing. So you can see all the dimensions here. But let's just minimize this. I'm going to reopen the program. And when I, I have an option to open up previous drawings. So we could do it this way or we can go browse. See it's here, it's ready to open. So we could press OK. But if it's not here, let's go open an existing drawing. Browse. And we'll go scroll down to desktop. Scroll down to your folder and open your drawing. Double click. Now, close that. Let's see if this works this time. I'm going to click on this. There we go. That's the box I need. Sometimes that box doesn't show up and I have to close the program and restart it for it to show up. It doesn't happen too often, but it's a bit annoying. <clears throat> what we want to do, first of all, is check that our dimensions are set up. Now, this is a bit of an advanced procedure, so I'm just going to tell you what the dimensions should be. So click on, make sure this is clicked on automatic. Click now on text. Make sure yours looks like mine. Text size of 2. This is always Arial. Offset is 0. Format is 1.5. And this is changeable. You just hit these down arrows and you can scroll up or down. Make sure your precision is on 1. Horizontal position is centered. Vertical position, centered, orientation, normal, movement, dimension line with text. Then save, close. We might as well check some of these other ones. Prefix and suffix should say none, none, save, close. Arrowhead. I have this arrow selected. One, two, three, four, five. Five down from the top. Position is auto, size is 2. Save, close. Extension. I'll show you what this means later, but we have it set to 2 and 2. Overshoot and gap. Save, close. And this we never touch. So just say none and save, close. Now, after you change all of these. Sometimes the dimensioning tool doesn't work properly, but uh, we again, we just restart in that case the dimensioning tool and it will work. So when we dimension something, now don't follow me yet, I'm going to redo this. I'm just going to explain what this looks like. I'm going to snap to the first point, I'm going to right click or snap to the second point, and then I'm going to hit the apostrophe or the point relative key. And then I can set my dimension a certain distance from my object. 
In this case, it will be negative 5 on the x-axis. So, see this distance between here and here? I'm going to zoom right into that for you. This distance I set to 5. And because I'm going left of the line that I drew, it's negative 5. Now the parts to a dimension. This is my dimension line. It's terminated with arrowheads. And it contains the dimension. The dimension line points towards an extension line. And that extension line protrudes from your drawing but does not touch the drawing. In fact, we set this, and you already set it. You watched me set it to 2. This is called my gap. And this is called my overshoot. And this is very common that the gap and overshoot will be the same. The extension line shouldn't touch the object line. So this is your object that you drew, and it shouldn't touch it. Sometimes it runs through it, but it shouldn't touch it because then it looks like it's part of the dimension. So let's do that together. You already set up your dimensioning tool. I'm going to zoom out. And I'm going to delete this, and we'll draw that together. So click on your dimensioning tool. Right click here. Right click here. And go point relative. Negative 5. Enter. Next, I would like you to take your dimensioning tool. This time I want you to right click up here, right click down here, and this time I want you to go negative 5 from the last point. Oops, I didn't press the right button. Point relative, negative 5, enter. Point relative. Excuse me for a second, I don't know if I'm still recording here. Let me check. Yep, it says I'm recording. Let's get back to drawing. Okay, uh, let's redo that. Well, you don't have to if it worked good for you, but I was sidetracked. So let's grab that dimensioning tool. We right-click here, right-click here, and from my last point, I click point relative and go negative 5. Enter. Okay, I could have right-clicked here and right-clicked here, but then I would have to add this value to my point relative dimension. And I don't know what that is. I don't remember. So I know this is 5. So I'm just scroll over here so you can see this a little better. Let's dimension this point right here. Get your dimensioning tool. Right click, right click, and this time we're going to go point relative, so apostrophe, and dy, so dx is 0, dy is 5, because we're going up. So the value from the end of the arrowhead down to here is 5. Okay, now here's a fun trick. Once you have one dimension set most of the time, I'm going to say most of the time because sometimes this doesn't work, you can just simply do this. Grab your dimension tool, right click, right click, and then right click to that arrowhead like that. And what that does is it snaps it in line, which is awesome. What you don't want to do here, I'll delete this, what you don't want to do is right click here and right click here and then right click here. Because what happens is you don't, have, you don't have a gap here. If I try and move this, you can see why. My gap is way down here. So make sure you're snapping to the outermost points. Right click, right click, right click. If you double click on any of these tools, they will stay up as long as you're done with them. So if I double click, just move that out of the way. Right click, right click, right click. And here I'm going to go, let's see if this will work. Right click, right click, and right click. It worked. And how about this one? Right click, right click. No. Uh, yeah, it did work. Right click. Sometimes it doesn't work on those longer dimensions. Now we still have the tool up. So let's you do the bottom. Right click, right click. This time we're going to go point relative, apostrophe. We're going down, so it's negative 5. Enter. And we're going to dimension this part next. Right click, 
right click point relative, five on DX, tab, zero on DY. Enter, beautiful. Now, let's do this one up here. We're gonna go right click, right click, and we're gonna push this five this way. So point relative, DX is five, DY is zero, enter. We're going to dimension the bottom, the top of this one, and the right side, and then I believe we're done our drawing. So grab that dimensioning tool. This can be moved out of the way. Right click, right click, point relative, zero, tab, negative five, enter. Oh, and I forgot, we also have to put one here. So we're going to go like this, right click, right click. Point relative, and five, tab, zero, enter. And I'm gonna do the right side of this here because I already have that value in my point relative. So it's five, right? Because it's gonna be the same as this. So when you get smarter with your, with your um, dimensioning, you can do all of the verticals that are, point, that are five away on the right side, and then you don't have to change your point relative value. And the last one, right click, right click and apostrophe or point relative zero tab five because I'm going up enter I'm gonna fit that to screen and sit back and enjoy what we've just drawn together it looks pretty good but how do I know it's yours well you're gonna grab this text tool right here and you're gonna put in your name in my case my first name is mister and last name is cardinal and that's too small. Let's make that a little bit bigger. That's too big. Let's make that a little smaller. And that's perfect. Size of font of three. You might have to change that a bit depending how long your name is. So I'm going to left click and you can notice I can rotate it. But as soon as I let go of my mouse and press enter, it goes straight. And if you don't like the position, you just pick it up and you can move it. Awesome. So let's save that. File. Uh, save. I guess I could have just pressed that button right there. Okay, so I believe we're done. Only thing you have to do is send this to me and I can show you that in a later video or maybe a later time. So this is saved in your folder. Congratulations on one of your first design CAD drawings. Now how do you shut this recorder off? There used to be a pause button here. Let's go into this.